Hey friends, today we are going to take a deeper look at the U framework and use it to call an open source API. Well, not open source, but open data API. We'll go over how to fetch data like this and also how to handle API errors. This is going to be fun, guys. I promise. So let's look uh, for a weather database. Uh, okay, so national weather API, free for to use for any purpose. I like it. <laughs> Let's look at how to use the API. How do I get the forecast? First, you need to get your office, then grid X and grid, grid Y. Grid X and grid Y. Um, all right, so we are in Detroit. Let's let's get coordinates for that. Just by the sense like good old times. We'll copy the coordinates over. Lock them into the web API. Great. So with these, we get the office. Yeah, we get the office and the grid X and Y, which we need to query the next service. So we get an array with period with period periods. Jesus. Yeah, so these different periods uh, tell us like the wind speed, wind direction, temperature, and a bunch of data that we can use. All right, so let's create a project using Cargo. So Cargo, new weather, you. Then you see, we're going to open these using weather. First thing we need to do is to install you as a dependency. Now we need to create an entry point for our app for our application. We'll run the app using trunk. Uh, please uh, pause this video and go watch this video if you want to learn about how to set up trunk. All right, we need to set up an HTML file. That's true. Cool, so let's see if the application loads, which it does. Uh, fantastic. Now let's add code to fetch our data. So we need to install a few dependencies. We'll use... All right. So let's make the web request right here. So wasm wasm find gen let's create the url so forecast first we'll just fetch the data as a string and then i'll show you how to fetch it as a json Import requests from Wasm. Yep. Import console. Right. So if we look at the response, it says that the endpoint does not exist. And that's because I have a typo here. So let's fix that. 
So this is a comma. Okay, let's see if that fixed it. Cool. If we so we got the JSON back. Now let's transform this loosely typed JSON into a Rust struct using Sergi. Alright, so to mother our data, we need to look at the response that we got from the server. And probably what we care about the most is the, the forecast data. So we get an array in a field called periods. These things are not like evenly spaced. So like this is like four hours. The next chunk is more than, it's actually 12 hours. So to me, each period corresponds to like the next significant temperature or wind or a rain change in the future. So the, 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 the length of that window is variable. Uh, all right, so how we're going to call this? I, I will say we need to call this forecast. So let me open this side by side, the IDE, and we'll create a few data structures. Probably we need to implement a few Sergi uh, macros. Well, actually, we need to implement some traits to get to be able to serialize to and from JSON. All right, now we are going to modify our code here so that we get back. Uh, the forecast object. No, not here. Sorry, he down here. All right, we need to implement all these thirty traits. So let's do that. Let's open the page again and see what we got. <laughs> Inspect. Oh, Jesus. Okay. So we got an error because missing field periods. All right. So I got the structure wrong. Let's uh, fix it. This is it. I skipped one level. I skipped, skipped properties. <laughs> So we need to add a properties object and then periods under it. So let's just add it. Jesus. Okay, we got another exception. And this is because our code is written in snake case and the API is in, is in uh, camel case. So if we remember this, Nah, not this. Where's our API response? This. 
So everything is on camel case. So how can we fix this? There is a keyword in Serdy to enable um, naming things in, in uh, transforming from snake case to camel case. Okay, Serdy, it's uh, another macro. So we need to say Serdy rename all and then camel case. Oh, <laughs> okay, this is wrong too. Um, so this is end time, not not date. Now we need to recompile. So yeah, let's see if this uh, does the trick. Oh, one more. We need to stick that macro. Let's stick it everywhere, just to be safe. All right, so let's try again. All right, so after going back and forth a couple of times, we finally got our API to be parsed properly. So let's move on. Next, instead of printing to the console, we want to render all the, um, how do you call these things? Periods to the, to the page. So yeah, let's work on that. So let's remove this console.log. Instead, we'll use the set state hook. Uh, so forecast is going to be set for, for forecast will have type um, option of, of forecast because when we initially load the application, forecast will be none until this web service call is completed. Uh, so just to test, uh, let's print this to the console. Why I cannot use that? I, I do not understand. Um, um, right. So the problem is that forecast is moved into this closure here. So then I cannot just use it after. So what I'm going to do is clone it. And this should make it happy. Now let's try with the with the browser. All right, neat. So after, oh yeah. So you see, not that yet for a split second, and then it just loads uh, all the data. So this is looking great. Now <laughs> instead of rendering the JSON like this, um, let's let's go ahead and create components to represent these periods. We cannot pass the period, the period object uh, directly. Instead, we have to use props. The props will be just the period object. We need to add a few macros here. Okay, now that the compiler is happy, let's go ahead and try to render this. If you come from uh, React like me, you'll try to render everything using the same like HTML return 
object or macro in this case. But uh, the U syntax is not as smart as the React uh, JSX module. So what you'll have to do is return two different HTML. You'll need to call the HTML macro twice. We'll iterate through the um, forecast periods and just render them individually. We need to add a few macros to our components, but that should be fine. All right, all right. so period implements clone, great. What else? All right, cool. So I just cloned the, the value. Probably I don't need to implement it here then. All right, neat. Let's render something using those rows to make sure that this is working. we can see how it pulled the start date from each um, element. This is great. Now let's format these things correctly. All right, so at least I want to add some CSS to this. There are some properties that I want to show for each of the periods, like the name. So it's like tonight, tomorrow, that kind of thing. Now we want to show the temperature as well. There's another property called forecast, which is really good. And then we have the image. Short forecast. <laughs> I love having a strongly typed uh, period over here. Right, let's add some very basic CSS. All right, so it looks decent, but this is not by any means anything nice, but um, I want us to focus on the on the REST API. So let's handle, let's start handling some errors. So if we go to localhost without an internet connection, we'll get an error. Because when we fetch the response, we just unwrapped the the um, we just unwrapped the response and tried to turn it into into an object. So let's make this better by uh, not doing that, and also by adding a button so that the user can retry to reconnect. All right. So instead of forcing unwrapping this um, response and then casting that to a JSON or like parsing the response into a JSON. Let's go step by, by step and catch all the possible errors. So there are two possible outcomes for this operation. It either succeeds or fails. If we get a, a success here, then we can try to pass to, to a JSON. You either get the object here, so it's uh, 
forecast. Well, no. This this will get you a result back. A result. Result of the um, forecast or like some error. So here is the actual forecast. Or an error. And only if only we make it here, then we'll set it. Okay. There's some shadowing going on here, so... Alright, cool. In both these scenarios, we need to show like a... like an error. Maybe we can show the error to the UI. So, let's... Let's add this to a state. We'll just get the string out of it. How about that? And here we'll do the same. Now, when there's an error, we want to show some sort of button that allows the user to, like, retry. We can do pattern matching, that's the simplest. So, if there is some error, then we have to render it. Else, there's not data yet. We will add a button so that they can reload. Then we need a function, so on click. Also, we want to show the same button here. So if there's no data yet, if there's not data yet, we want to say, uh, show the same message. All right, now let's create a uh, closure so that we can click on it and it forces like refreshing data. So we'll take this whole thing and wrap it using a closure. Now we are going to have to clone a bunch of objects because we are moving them around. I kind of dislike that we need to have so many clones of, of a forecast. So let's use a box pointer to simplify that. To simplify this. Nice. So the code is a lot cleaner. All right. So this is going to be our initial our initial state. Let's just say um, load call API. How about that? Call API. Yeah. 
it's gotta go format this thing. Yes. And let's test it. Alright. Let's uh, load the app. Alright, no data yet. Call API. Looks good. Now let's um, unplug the internet and try again. Oh yes, Wi-Fi is still on. <laughs> Alright. So Wi-Fi is off. Let's refresh. Cool. So we get an error. Now let's turn on Wi-Fi again. Let's wait until we get an IP. All right, let's go. Sweet. <laughs> All right. Pretty, pretty cool.